Hey guys, so I just got done watching through Brian Denlinger's latest question and answer videos. Um, he let people ask questions in his comment section and then he went through and answered them. He had about six different parts, each like an hour long, and there was so much error in there. I made like probably ten clips or more. I'm sure there could have been plenty more, but I tried to look for ones where people asked about specific verses and to see like what his interpretation was, and then I you know, kind of check them to see if, if it's accurate or whatnot. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are controversial ones and stuff. And this is stuff that I work with a lot as well. Anyways, this is one of those verses. And uh, I've questioned this before. But uh, I found this really great commentary on Bible Hub. And uh, I just want to point this out. Um, I'm not going to go over everything about this verse, uh, every point of view, and, and refute everything. But uh, this verse is 1 Peter 3, 19. Or, no, first, yeah, 1 Peter 3, 19 specifically. But it's the passage, 1 Peter 3, 18 through 20, pretty much. But a lot of people interpret this that after Jesus died, he went to paradise and preached either to those who were saved or to those who were lost, uh, suffering in hell, or to fallen angels who were in hell because they mated with women, which is false. Okay, and I've said that plenty of times, and I'm not going to go a lot into that interpretation so much right now. But basically that's based on the fact that in 1 Peter 3.19, it says that he preached unto the spirits in prison, and people will say, well, spirit must be an angel or whatever. Well, no, that's that is not true. Okay, it doesn't have to be that way, and it's not that way. So, um, actually, I would say that there are no fallen angels uh, in hell yet, because it's not their time yet, okay? Um, so, but anyway, and th then there's one point on this commentary that I don't agree with at the end, but that has to deal with that. Anyways, I'll read this passage, and it says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. And so Brian Denlinger's interpretation of this is that he went to paradise and preached, uh, now, the doctrine of paradise is controversial and stuff. I've had my concerns about it. There's not a whole lot to look at for it. But I do think that it's probably true and biblical because Jesus, when he died, he went to the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And he said that he hasn't yet ascended to his father later on. So, you know, that combined with some other things... Uh, seems to show that the Old Testament saints didn't go directly to heaven where God is, but they went to a place called paradise. Um, that hell was separated into two compartments. One was paradise where the saved went, and one was the place of suffering and torment. That seems to be accurate, but anyways, that's not what this is talking about. So this is a great commentary, and I just want to read through this. Okay. So basically, 1 Peter 3.19, by which also. Okay. Um, in 1 Peter 3.18, it says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And I believe that's talking about the resurrection of Jesus, I think but being quickened by the Spirit. And then verse 19 starts off, by which also he went and preached. So we're talking about the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. 
Okay, so, by which also, that is by which Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he went and preached, having gone he preached, namely, in and by Noah, who spake by the Spirit of Christ. Okay, so this is talking about the, in the past, during the time of the flood, before the flood, uh, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, preached in and by Noah. Okay, the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, was in Noah, and it was preaching through Noah. Okay, Noah was preaching by the Spirit. He spake by the Spirit of Christ. Now, this is a, one of the first great references. There's a few great references here, and I, I wrote these all down in my Bible next to this verse in 1 Peter 3.19. So this is 1 Peter 1.11, it says, Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So it's talking about the prophets from before, that the Spirit of Christ was in them. Okay. So, the Spirit of Christ is in Noah. And in Genesis 6, 3, it says, The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. So God was long-suffering. God was, you know, being patient with man. And his servant Noah, by God's spirit, was preaching to them, preaching for them to repent, to turn to him. Okay, he was striving with man that they would repent and turn from their wicked ways. <clears throat> this is referring to the men of that generation. My spirit shall not always strive with man. Hence, Noah is called a preacher of righteousness. Okay. 2 Peter 2.5 but and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. He was, Noah was a preacher of righteousness, so by which also, that is by the Spirit, he went and preached through the preacher of righteousness, Noah. Preached through Noah. And, and these two references are in Peter, so this is like consistent. You know, Peter's talking about how the Spirit of Christ was in the prophets, was in the saints, you know, before. Even before Christ came, okay, the Spirit of God was in them. This is consistent with this. So, by attributing the preaching of the ancient prophets to Christ, the Apostle hath taught us that from the beginning the economy of man's redemption has been under the direction of Christ. Okay. To the spirits in prison. Now, this is, you know, the part where people stumble on. But this, this is explained really well here. That is, which were in prison when St. Peter wrote this epistle. Okay, so First um, <clears throat> Peter three nineteen, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Okay, so that would, that's like Peter saying he went and preached to those who are in hell now, but he preached to them before they went to hell. Okay, so that they wouldn't go to hell. He was trying to get them to repent so they wouldn't go, but they are in hell now. So this, this explains it really well here. I'll keep reading. They were men in the flesh when Christ preached to them by his spirit speaking in Noah. But after they were dead, their spirits were shut up in the infernal prison. Okay. Now that's just an awesome, awesome explanation there. So I hope that you get that. I'll read it again. They were men in the flesh when Christ preached to them by his spirit, speaking in Noah. But after they were dead, their spirits were shut up in the infernal prison, okay, in hell. So I hope you understand this. It shouldn't be too hard to understand. 
but he's just saying that, you know, the Spirit of God, uh, you know, has, has resurrected the Lord Jesus, and uh, the Spirit of God also uh, spoke through the saints in the past, particularly Noah, uh, calling men to repentance, you know, also through Isaiah, also through, uh, you know, Ezekiel, and, and many, many others, but particularly here we're talking about Noah, the Spirit of God preached through Noah for men to repent to those who are in hell now, okay, um, during that time of the flood, okay, before the flood. So, when they were preached to, they were on the earth, okay, but now they reside in hell because they didn't heed to that preaching, okay, they didn't repent they didn't turn to God, which is necessary for salvation. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, there's a lot more that can be said about this verse, but I hope that straightens some things out. So, God bless.